It's uh, good to see each one of you here this morning on a cold Valentine's Day. And we're glad that you're here uh, today. Steve, thank you for sitting on that side, balancing everything out here. Uh, that's, that's a good day. Take your Bibles and turn, um, if you would. And, and I, am, I am excited about these uh, slides here, and I'm thinking that we're not quite, uh, yes, yes, we're going to get there. Ah, yes, yes, it's there. John chapter 13. And verse 34 and 35, a familiar text, and I pray that the simple message of this morning on this Valentine's Day will uh, be a blessed challenge uh, to each one of us, that we will be truly changed from glory to glory by the Word of God, and that we will become more and more and more like our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, because we've sat here for this next few moments. Amen? Is that what it's all about? Are you ready for that? Uh, I'm ready for change. Uh, my wife is ready for change of me. I know <laughs> she's, she, she's ready for me to become a better husband. Uh, we're ready for each other to become better uh, spouses, uh, children, uh, uh, church members, and, and, and all. It's all about change. It's all about change from glory to glory uh, by the word of God. I'm going to read the text uh, here of verse 34 and 35, familiar story, Jesus uh, nearing the end of his earthly life and ministry, washing the feet of the disciples, talking to them about real leadership and real love and what it's really all about. And he says this, a new commandment, verse 34, uh, I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one another for another. Let's pray together and ask God to bless this time. Father, we thank you for your word, how powerful it is, how challenging it is, and how changing it is. And we ask that you would challenge and change us, Lord, this day through these words, anew and afresh, Lord, that we would be challenged. And we pray that your Holy Spirit would come and Take the words off the page and tattoo them on our hearts, Lord, and bring them to our feet, our hands, Lord, uh, our arms, that they would be extended in love to one another. And we'll thank you and we'll praise you and we'll ask you to do something special in our service today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Um, but uh, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one for another. We've entitled the sermon today, uh, Feel the Love. Okay, now I was going to say, it's all about the love. Okay, <laughs> it's all about the love. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to ask, do others uh, feel the love uh, that we should show? It is God's love that is shown through us. God, uh, in the Bible, we see that he is the one who initiates love. He shows his love to us. He is the start uh, of all love. The Bible says that God is love. 1 John 4 and verse 16. God is love. And, and what, a, what an apt, what a pithy, what a, what a succinct definition of God. Uh, one slice, of course, of the many thoughts about God. But, but one is in 1 John 4 and verse 16, God is love. God is love. So he's the initiator. He is the one who uh, defines love. He is the one uh, who defines love by giving. For God so loved the world, finish the verse for me, that he gave, that he gave, okay? And so defining love is God, uh, and, and, and God defines it as a sacrificial giving and a sacrificial living. And so this is a demonstration, a delineation of love uh, 
God, I love uh, Romans 5 and verse 8, but God commendeth, God expressed his love toward us. We're going to talk a lot about this today, that what good is love to just say and to speak and to have and to hold, but not to share and to give and to uh, demonstrate. Uh, the Bible says in this, 1 John 4 and verse 9, it was manifested the love of God. It needs to be demonstrated. It needs to be commended. It needs to be manifested. It is, it is felt. It is known in giving because God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. And so every day, a, a caring, loving, giving day is the love of God that comes to us. It must be shed. It must be shown. It must be shed abroad. Here in his love, 1 John 4 and verse um, 9 and verse 10, here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us, that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins, the total complete payment for our sins. So, so in the Bible, we see the initiation of love is God, is God. He initiates love, and he initiates love to us. And God so loved the world that he gave. And, and then there's a, you know, just logically, and by way of introduction here, there's, there's a, re, a reception of love. And, and this love is 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 given at the cross. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Love came down and died on a cross. Wow. What a what an example! What a def, what a declaration of love! And then, and that love then must be received. And this is this is God's love. Then, and it becomes uh, God's love in us when we come to the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ in faith and trust, and really know love. To really to really love and to really be able to love is to know the giver of love and the initiator and the demonstrator of love and to know that truth in your heart, to, to know the joy of sins forgiven, to know the joy that greater love hath no man than this than that a man would lay down his life, to know the laying down of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins and he wants to come in us. He wants to reside in us and we, by faith, repent of our sins and trust him and receive him into our lives and, and it becomes God's love in us. So, so God's love uh, is initiated and then God's love is received and then, and then thirdly, God's love is reciprocated back to God. We love him because he first loved us. In our first initiation and reciprocation and, and expression of love should be a life of thankfulness back to God. That the very essence of our Christian life is a love relationship with God. He loved us. We love him. This is, this is the love, the reciprocation of love. And it, it says that, that, that our love is made perfect and we have boldness in the day of judgment and there is no fear in love and perfect love casteth out fear. And, and, and it says we love him, 1 John 4 and verse 19, because he first loved us. And so there's a reciprocation of that love back to God. Uh, Jesus said that that love is expressed in obedience. If you love me, finish the verse, keep my commandments, okay? It's not just, oh, I love you, God. I love you, God. We love you, Lord. We're going to sing that at the end of our service today. But, but it, it's not just some words that are empty. It's the showing of words in the way that he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, Jesus said, that's John 14 and verse 15. In verse 23 of John 14, uh, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. Uh, John 15 and verse 10, if ye keep com my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. And so love is, is expressed in obedience to God. It's not just some gushy gushy feeling of love uh, that defines love. 
Love is found in obedience and in obedience to Christ. And so there's a reciprocation of love back to God first and foremost. And then, then and only then, there can be this uh, expression of love to others. And that is the reflection of love. It's really God's love that we give and that we share. Uh, the only thing good in me is J-E-S-U-S. -S. And, and, and it's Jesus that is shown and Jesus' love that is glowed uh, of my time, of my talent, of my treasure, of my uh, opportunity to share and to bless and to give to others so that they might feel the love, that they might uh, see and sense that, that I have this love, but I don't just talk about this love. For if a man says he loves God and hateth his brother, 1 John 4 and verse 20, he's a liar. Uh, for he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Uh, this commandment we have from him, he that loveth God loveth his brother also. And so if we love God in reciprocation of his love to us, then the love is going to go out this way. Amen? It's going to be extended out to other people. And by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one for another. And let, not, let us not love in word, uh, but in deed and in truth. Uh, hereby perceive we. This is 1 John 3.16. We're familiar with John 3.16, aren't we? You know, but this is 1 John 3.16. Listen to how similar it sounds. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Wow. This is love. This is love perceived. This is love felt. And what good is love if it's not demonstrated, if it's not, if it doesn't come out of its vessel to the touching of other lives? This is the challenge this morning. This is the question this morning. Uh, do you, do you feel the love? Do you feel the love? And, it, and it's not, and it's not about you. And it's not about me. It's about others. And so I asked the question in that way, uh, do others feel the love, the love of God through you. We live in a me generation, um, uh, and, it, and it's not about us. It's not about us. It's about others feeling the love. A new commandment I give unto you. Now, I want to get very practical in this message. Uh, Jesus was very practical as he uh, he, he demonstrates and takes upon himself in this context of John 13, uh, the washing of the feet of the disciples. And what an act, taking the lowliest servant's job and bowing down before those disciples and washing uh, their feet. This is this new commandment I give unto you and gaining their attention. And I, I, I would wonder if, if you'd think of you know, how do people really feel the love on a cold day? Well, they might feel it, and Rob, you could probably get the, uh, you know, volume up a little bit when they come home from Florida and their driveway is plowed and sideways. We have their video. I couldn't figure out how to flip it, you know? I couldn't do it. I just tried. <laughs> I just got it sideways. <laughs> Uh, it, love is felt when it's not just a prison epistle that we get. Uh, it is a prison epistle that is responded to. It is missionary giving, and it is the love that is shared in that support by prayer. It is finding out where Charlie Keeler is and blessing him and helping him. It is, whoa, there it is, washing the feet washing the feet of the disciples. Um, love, love, it, it happens in, you know, it's when, the, it's when the leftovers meet the after surgeries. Amen? It's when Cindy Ruff uh, gets that meal after her surgery, wanting to be here at church today. She said, I don't think I'm going to make it. 
but her neighbor was there to bless her, and we were there. It, it was Dave feeling the love when he got a cup of coffee, but he says, you know, he could have felt the love more if he got the big one. <laughs> Instead of, instead of the little one, okay? Uh, it's feeling the love when we just get together and we fellowship and share special times together and think about one another and consider one another and provoke one another unto love and to good works. This young man has a, has a uh, you know, he's got the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, you know, get up on. But over that goes the, uh, you know, goes the flyer's jacket. And he has the phantom cap now, but he doesn't have a flyer's cap. <laughs> and all it took was to mention that to someone, and, and he has not even seen this. Uh, all it took was to mention that to someone. And this came in the mail and to be given to this young man today. Not only, not only, a flyer's cap that he is going to be so excited about. My wife said, don't you dare give it to him unless I can see you give it to him. But are you ready for this? <laughs> His name, Jonathan, marked on the back. Now, that's love, okay? Love must be felt. And it's felt when those grandkids are have and hold and, and there. It's felt when they come into this world and we have opportunity to show them. I was so excited. I got this anonymous text. I didn't know who it was from. And I said, whoa, a little baby named Maritza. Wait till I tell Maritza. <laughs> I started to look at it a little closer. The baby's not named Maritza. <laughs> but there's a connection with Maritza. <laughs> okay. I saw Maritza's name somewhere. Love is felt when you're at Home Depot and, and, and you, you see see the item that might bless your wife and, and you say, should I buy that? And you text it to her and she says, oh, that'd be perfect. That'd be perfect for all those wet shoes that are supposed to come off and never come off and should come off so that the cleaning could be done. It's when the beard comes off that you love, okay? It's when the, it's when the tracks go out of your pocket into the hand of people there, the last one for the moment in line at that concert. But one in line at that concert was looking at the back of that sticker and wondering, wondering, wondering just if they dialed that number, there would be someone at the other end that could help them and counsel in their disastrous relational situation, ravaged by pornography. And love is shown when time and effort and attention and prayer and counsel is given. Love is when we touch other people's lives and they, and they feel it. They feel it. And Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. And so I'd like to hear on this word new. It didn't seem new, uh, for there were other commandments at other times given, uh, there were uh, uh, commandments, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, and even to love the stranger uh, in Israel, uh, the Old Testament had commanded to love the Lord thy God. Uh, Jesus says a new commandment, I give unto you, that ye love one another. And then he highlights it uh, with the phrase and the thought, by this, shall all men know that you belong to me if you have love one for another. And so I'd like to kind of ask this question, how, how is this? How could this be new? Uh, uh, saying, I love you, saying, I love you, saying, I love you, uh, doesn't cut it. It's a different level of love than even having and holding or even saying love. It's the extension of love, of those arms. Uh, a new commandment, how, how so? Well, I'd like to just give you some points of truth from this little phrase that could change our lives and change our marriages and change our homes and change our church and change our world. Amen. It could change our world. New. First of all, in the sense of 
the objects of our love. The objects of our love. Uh, it, it, that you love one another. Oh, you mean that one with the feet so stinky that I'm glad, Jesus, you washed instead of me. And I'm not looking forward to obeying this commandment as I have done, so you do also. Because those feet are the really stinky ones. And they stunk not just because of the fungus and the warts and the, you know, whatever else feet get. Uh, they stunk because of the background of that person wearing those feet. And he was kind of unlike unlike in fact in fact beyond unlike us uh i would add the word unliked by us it was the different side of the tracks it was it was the zealot of judaism who was totally against the roman government and fought it at every way that he could uh being next to the tax collector jew who was the sellout. When it's when zealot meant, met sellout that there was uh, this kind of friction going on. And Jesus brings them together and says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. It's when that one from uh, upstage Jerusalem had to hang with that backward Galilean. Okay. That was the testing of love. And it's when there are people that are not only unlike us, but they are generally, and at a glance, unliked by us. And God tells us, are you ready for this? God tells us to love people we don't like. That's what he tells us to do. He commands us to do it. In the love of Jesus. And we realize that he loved them to death on the cross. And he wants us to extend love to people very unlike us. And it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. It'd be easy if everyone was like us. If everyone liked to deer hunt, if everyone was from Minnesota, if everyone voted the same, if everyone thought the same, if everyone uh, uh, had the same habits and hobbies and this and that, uh, and, and drove the same car, the, the, you know, then it would be very easy to love everyone and to love one another. But it's when we're called to love people that are unlike us. And so... Romans would come in and bow before the Savior, the Apostle Paul, uh, witness to soldiers and to kings of the Roman government as a Jew. It's when the publicans, tax collectors, met the zealots, and it's, it's when people, uh, and, and here, here's, here's what it was. it was. It was a whole lot of sinners being mixed up in the same pot and they called it a church <laughs> it was a place where it was to be this demonstration of love and the hallmark of this would be that by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one for another it's people of different sizes shapes and colors in a marriage on Valentine's Day, we can, you know, illustrate this. And it was a blessing for me today to be in the Wawa and hear the background music of that yours forever, yours faithfully, and be reminded of my son-in-law's continuing abiding commitment to my daughter, Rachel James, there in New Jersey. And I called him up and I said, I just heard your song. What song? That song. That song that I first heard uh, uh, when I said, who is this young man after my daughter? You know? And, and, and let's project the worst for a moment for James and Rachel, okay? 
let's project I get the phone call. I don't love her anymore. Oh, oh, chill just went down my spine. I'm glad my wife isn't here at this moment. Uh, I don't love her anymore. In fact, dad, in-law, uh, you know, she is, she's, she's moved out. Wait, 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 wait a minute, James. Wait, wait a minute, James. Where'd she move? She moved across the street. You don't understand. I just fell out of love for her. Heaven forbid. I said, James, where does she live again? Across the street. That makes her your neighbor. Love thy neighbor. <laughs> you don't understand, Dad. I mean, opposites attack. You told me that in a joke, but I realized after a few years of marriage, it's true. We are so opposite. In fact, in fact, uh, she has not even become my friend anymore. My more, I would just put her in the camp of enemy. James, guess what? Love thine enemy. <laughs> <laughs> and so if, if it's not under the love thy wife, command, not feeling, command. It's love thy neighbor. And if it's not of that, it's love thine enemy. We're not getting out of love. So you might as well get right with her, James. <laughs> I don't know if you're listening to this. <laughs> All hypothetical. But God says we're commanded to love one another. And he gives us new, new objects of that love. Secondly, I'd like you to think about something else that's new. It's a new extent of love. There's a, there's a simple little phrase here. It's, it's just this phrase, so easy, and we, it's, it's so small, it's just a few words, and we could probably just hit the delete button on those couple words, and we'd be out of a big, huge, heavy payload of what this actually means. It's the words, as I loved as I loved you. And we're looking at the extent of love that brings us to the cross of Calvary, as I have loved you. You see, Jesus loved us to be willing to die. He loved us to death. He loved us uh, to the extent uh, that, that there is a love uh, that is that is new and different and other and wholly other in the extent that he loved us. Uh, it is it is willing to die, willing to die. It's Valentine's Day. Did I say that? Yes, yes. Husbands, Ephesians chapter five. Love your wives. And then there's this little phrase: even as Christ loved the church. Whoa, whoa. -oh. I like the other part in the same passage of Ephesians chapter 5. And it says there, uh, husbands, uh, you know, to so ought men to love their wives even as their own bodies. And so we're going to give it a couple levels, okay? Husbands, love your wife as you love yourself. No man ever yet hated his own self, flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it. Man, we take pretty good care of ourselves. We take pretty good care of ourselves. And somebody said amen. I mean, I know where I hid the haagen bar in the freezer. <laughs> Nobody else knows where that is, <laughs> okay? We take pretty good care of ourselves. And, 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 and God says to love our spouse as we love ourselves, level one. But eclipsing level one is husbands love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So ought men to love their wives, even as Christ loved the church. Wow. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. And so to love our wife as you love yourself is one level. But to love our wife as Christ loved the church. Wow. This is the extent. It's a, it's a willing to die. And, and, and not to minimize uh, the willingness to die, it, it is a willingness to not only die, but to live. Jesus said, as I have loved you. And he talks to his disciples before his death about his life that he lived. In front of those people that he said, come, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. 
and, and, and somehow they left their nets and followed him. And I don't know all the extent of what that meant. But I know that when they needed lunch, they got one. In fact, if it wasn't available, they got a few loaves and a few fishes, and they fed not only them, but 12 apostles had 12 basketfuls remaining. Jesus loved them not only to death, but he loved them in life. He not only died for them, but he lives for them. The Bible says that even after and beyond his death, burial, and resurrection, it says of the Lord Jesus Christ this day, he ever liveth to make intercession for us. It'd be exciting, wouldn't it, if, um, if you heard that, that your pastor died for his wife on Emmaus Avenue because a truck was coming and Dorinda was crossing the road. And, 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 and Gary saw the truck, but Dorinda didn't see the truck. And at the last split second, Gary pushed Dorinda out of the way, but got smashed by the truck. And you read in the newspaper, pastor dies for his wife. That'd be exciting. I know that guy. I know that guy. He, 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 he's the guy. He was my pastor. He died for his wife. Be pretty exciting, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, I'd say it'd be pretty exciting. Would you do that, Danny? Look at that. <clears throat> Frank? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. <laughs> I'll stop right there. Okay? But think about it for just a moment. Okay? In one split second act of heroism, you die for your wife and you are out of here as a saved, born again Christian into the presence of God in heaven forever with no more bills walking on streets of gold. And your wife <laughs> is left with all the bills <laughs> and all the challenges and all the husbandlessness of widowhood. And it's like, it's like, okay, well, that'd be an exciting act. And, and, and I'm not minimizing in any respect the dying, okay, and the willingness of the extent. But I'm just saying Jesus not only dies for us, he lives for us. He carries us. He bears our burden. He takes our yoke and we take it upon him and find it easy and light. And he gives us, he gives us the power. In fact, this new commandment is new in the power of its even obedience is that we have the power of the Holy Spirit of God to live this love in front of a lost and needy world. In fact, if I would uh, spend a little time here on husband-wife relationships as a Valentine's Day it is, and, and then in any relationship, it, it is so blessed by people just striving to have others feel the love by others outloving others for the glory of God. Isn't that the answer in a marriage? Well, I'm just trying to outlove you. I'm just trying to outlove you. It's, I'll get the trash. No, I'll get the trash. No, I'll get the trash. And the only argument you have is over who will get the trash. And then one says, ha ha, I already got the trash. And they outloved each other. It's being willing to live, to take up that cross daily and to follow. It is being willing to lay down your life and live for one another in a life of outloving. Yes, the extent of it, willing to die. But few of us are called to die this second for our wife. But we're called to, to live. And, 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 and last night I thought, you know, as I've been so busy, my wife has been getting the coal bucket. But last night I thought with the cold, if I just put a little bit more on and empty this bucket out, I could get this filled up tomorrow so that she doesn't have to because I know I'll be busier on Sunday than she will be and she'll likely do it. It's the thinking ahead. It's the going the extra mile. It's the striving to outlove each other for the glory of God. And two people trying to outlove each other for the glory of God is a little heaven on earth. It's a little heaven on earth. One is good. <laughs> In a church relationship, in a church family of people just striving, just showing love. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples because of the extent of our love. We're willing to die for one another. Wow, how might that be tested? Let me say this, that I don't 
know the sincerity or the depth of a statement, yeah, I'd be willing to die for you if I'm not willing to live for you. I'll die for you, but I'm not going to come help change your tire. <laughs> and so the extent of it is a willing to die, but it's also a willing to live, a willingness to live. And so it's new in the sense of its objects were to love people unlike us and people unliked by us. And we're, it's new in the extent, in the, in the extent of it, in, in that we're to be willing to live and willing to die and, and, and to do that by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then it's, it's new thirdly and finally in the results of it. The results of it. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. These, this is, this is the results of that that type of love. It's the results that, that others become aware that something happened to you. God happened to you. God came down and touched my life on the cross. I received that and I reciprocated back to God and he says, that's not it, that's not all. He says, reciprocate it and reflect it out to others. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples by your love one for another. And in this place called a local church, especially and particularly and, and most obviously and most uh, uh, blatantly, we have the opportunity just to show love. And that a lost world is driving by and they're seeing and they're sensing something that is wholly different and it's not the same cutthroat, dog-eat-dog, top of the ladder and step over who to get there. It is something different. It is people blessing one another and loving one another and lifting one another up in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. It, it, is, it is making others aware, aware that as we follow in the footprints of Jesus, others see that, and by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. They say there's something, there's something different about you, and other believers are brought and they're drawn to the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is, this is what God desires. This is what God will do when there is an unearthly love amongst his people for each other. This is why the testimony of love is so precious and so important. This is why Satan tries to attack uh, the love. Uh, this is why in the end times the love of many shall wax cold. And, and, and will he find faith on the earth? And will he find the love that is produced by that faith uh, to one another so that others might be drawn to the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ? This is what it's all about. It's, it's about a testimony. And that testimony is not about me. It's not about what people think of us. It's about what people think of our Savior being drawn to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about, it's all about the love. <clears throat>